You do not need to be Super Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze to say that you have succeeded at bodybuilding or fitness and weightlifting. It is bull crap. Time of the board, A-hole here. Thank you for joining me as always. And I am sick and tired of all these articles that I keep reading online that just say ridiculous things when it comes to going to the gym. Because when you go to the Fitness of Palace of Love and you work out, you can keep it really simple and that's enough. The hard bit comes in the dedication. It comes in the consistency. It comes in the discipline. That's the tough stuff when you want to get all big and jacked. When you're just going to the gym to try and have a good time, you do not need to be waylaid by absolute nonsense. There's 10 things we need to get rid of right now. Number 10, the cheat meal. Now we all love a cheat meal or a treat meal if you want to be that guy. And it is massively important when it comes to your diet because if it gets to a Wednesday or a Thursday and you're like, oh man, I'm desperate to stuck, stick some cheese in my face. If you know that you can stick some cheese in your face on Saturday night, because that's when you're going to have your cheat meal. Nine times out of ten, you're more likely to skip it on the Wednesday, the Thursday, Friday, and you'll wait till the weekend. But what has happened recently, mostly because of The Rock, who has these apparent crazy cheat meals, and we don't know if he actually does eat all this stuff because he's never recorded that now, has he? People have decided they can go absolutely crazy nuts with their calories, and that's okay. That is not the point. <laughs> of the cheat meal. Just because you're doing a bunch of cardio and just because you're working out doesn't mean that when you do get to that time where you're allowed to break your diet that you send it off into the abyss. Now some people are going to get away with this. Some people won't be able to get away with this because it depends on your metabolism but you have to own that shib. That has to be on you. If you are having a cheat meal that's like 3,500 calories and you're realizing it's affecting you on the Sunday, the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday and you're still struggling to lose weight, you either need to cut it out entirely or my preferred option is just limit yourself to a calorific amount. Maybe it's 1,000 calories. Maybe it's 1,500 calories. Now, as soon as you do get to junk, you still start realizing, oh my gosh, 1,500 calories isn't that much at all, but it is far better to eat in moderation even when it comes to the fun food. Because so many people I chat to are like, I just can't lose fat. And they send me their diet. And on Saturday night, they just go nuts. And they have pizzas and they have burgers and they have chips and they have cookies. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that. If that makes you happy and that's going to put a smile on your face, then you absolutely should do it. But you have to realize that every action has a reaction and has a consequence. So let's get rid of it. Yes, you can have a cheat meal, but don't buy into this whole, oh, well, the reason I'm doing it is because it's going to kickstart my metabolism. There is some truth in that, but not when you're just trying to be in kind of okay good shape then you've got to be a lot smarter within it also you're lying to yourself and number nine is a classic but losing weight by lifting weights i just can't handle it anymore it's on so many articles on the internet oh why would you bother doing cardio when you can just lose a few calories by lifting weights that is not how you should be doing this you have to divide it up into your brain i have a cardio machine right here you can't see it my cross trainer that's what i use when I want to burn calories, that is its purpose. Also for cardiovascular health, but those two go hand in hand. When you are training in the gym and you are doing weightlifting work, that is for trying to build muscle or stimulate muscle, right? That's what it's there for. Do not act like you are burning a tremendous amount of calories. And this is also true on leg day. Now, I don't know what the average calorie burn is during a leg day, but it is not going to be as much as hit cardio, fasted cardio, steady state cardio, non-fasted cardio. That's why you do cardio. You can pick whichever one you want. There's no good one and there's no bad one. The only good one is the one you actually want to do, but it is a myth. If you are genuinely serious about trying to lose weight, you're going to have to be doing some sort of cardiovascular activity. And yes, to a point, of course, weight training is a cardiovascular activity, but I've already told you the deal. And number eight kind of ties into number 10, twists it a little bit, either eat clean or flab off. That's not realistic. That's not realistic at all. And unless you really want to eat chicken, veg and rice for the rest of your life, why would you do this to yourself anyway? And again, you're not going to be able to do it. Like even if I said to you, right, I'm going to pay you a million pounds a week, but your job is smashing your head into a wall over and over again. Eventually, you're going to start thinking to yourself, okay, I've got this million pounds and I'm rich, but this eight-hour period I have to do all of the time is making my life suck, so why does it even matter that I have all of this cash? And it's the same with this. You could be in the best shape of your life and be down to 4 or 5% body fat, but you're going to feel miserable anyway because everybody does. But also, you've just gone too far off the rails. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have to eat clean more often than not, but if you're out on a Wednesday and you just so happen to eat a Mars bar, this is all right. It's not going to kill you. It's different if you're an athlete and it's different if you're prepping for a bodybuilding contest, then you do have to be super strict. But what has happened in 2022, mostly because of the rise of the internet, is that people 
see human beings taking it to the extreme, and they decide, well, if I want to look like that, I'm going to have to take it to the extreme too. You don't want to look like that. That's not what you're aiming for. You are just aiming for a, different, a decent physique, which is maintainable, because those physiques aren't maintainable, which means you can eat your healthy food. And here and there, be smart with it. You know the deal. You can also have some non-clean food too. There are plenty of people out there that you would look at and go, wow, that dude is super jacked. And yeah, they're having junk here and there because you're allowed to do it. You just need to figure out how your body works and make adjustments to suit. And number seven is that you've got to train for hours and hours on end. No, you don't. No, you don't. Think of it in terms of body parts. Leg training is probably going to take longer than arm training. And arm training is probably going to take longer than if you just had a calf day. I was about to laugh about a calf day, but we probably should all have calf days because all of our calves secretly suck. But it's not a competition of endurance or how long you can spend in the gym. And I don't want to put a time on it because I don't know what that would be. But eventually it will be the law of diminishing returns. You won't have any energy. You won't be enjoying yourself and your body will just flip you off and be like, flub you, I don't want to do this anymore. Be intense. I'm going to talk about intensity later too, but be intense. Intensity is so much more important than volume. You don't have to go to the gym for two and a half hours. I know there's a bunch of Instagram posts where people go, oh my gosh, I spent 72 hours in the gym or Hollywood superstars that say that they do this. But their gym, A, they may just be making it up because it sounds good for press, but also maybe when they say gym or exercise, they meant they did 90 minutes of weight. They did an hour of cardio and then maybe they were training for a boxing movie. So they did the boxing training or MMA or mountain climbing or whatever it may be. Do not take this as the fact that you should go to the gym for four hours. It's not worth it. And actually, you're going to get in better shape if you allow your body to rest because that's where SHIB grows. And number six is ignoring pain. And this all comes down to no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Pain is good in a certain region because it means you're getting like lactic acid in your muscle, which means you've activated the muscle group, which is great. But Pain, as in, ow, that hurts. Stop going to the gym. You're impressing no one by saying, oh, even though my shoulder's falling off because I've damaged my rotator cuff, I still found a way to lift weights. Who are you impressing? I'm not impressed. Your mom's not impressed. Your nan's not impressed. Your dog's not impressed. They don't care for one. But also, you are just setting yourself up for a fall. Because even though you feel good now, you're going to increase the duration that you have that injury. So you're not actually going to get back to proper training as soon as you could have done if you were just rested. But you're going to get to 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, if you're lucky, 95. And your body's going to be totally messed up. Whereas when you were younger, if you had just taken a couple of weeks for that injury to calm down a little bit, everything would be better long term. You want to be training for your entire life, not just from 22 to 36. So if things do hurt, go home. Rest. You're allowed to rest for goodness sake. Look what sports people do. Like if a football player has even like a tiny injury, they take some time off because they're like, well, I don't want to make it even worse because then I'm going to miss the World Cup. That was a very specific <laughs> topical reference for 2022. Also, I am referencing soccer. That's just the deal. Number five is lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Now, I think most people know that that is absolute gibberish, but you see it everywhere and you see it coming from personal trainers. So they, they like it, of course, because it says, I'm going to allow you to lose one pound a week. Now, 28 pounds is a stone. So I guess 30 pounds, maybe like 1.3 stone or something like that. You should be losing over a stone in 30 days. And if you do, especially if you want to be a muscular chap or lady, you're absolutely going to be burning a lot of muscle. Not all of that is going to be fat. And you're just going to put it all back on. Because most of the time, lose 30 pounds in 30 days is because you want to go on holiday somewhere. So you're going to go to holiday, Ibiza, and you're going to start drinking and you're going to start eating. And your body's going to be so freaked out that over the last month, you dropped so much weight, you're just going to pile it on and then some. Do not go for these fat diets. Ignore every single thing you see about this online. Any trainer worth their salt is going to tell you this is going to take time. Sometimes we're going to lose one pound a week, a week, one to two pounds a week is what a good personal trainer will tell you. But even then they'll be like, but we don't know. We need to see how your body is responding. And these people are saying you're going to lose seven pounds, <laughs> seven pounds in a week. What are you, the rock? That is a very niche joke. Number four is a classic and I've said it time and time again, but I'm going to keep saying it so people realize eat all of the protein don't. Instead, find the amount of protein you need in order to grow and stick with that. Don't go to 500 grams just because some bodybuilder does it. Start at 100 grams, 150 grams. That's probably not going to be enough, but you know what you can do? You can add a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and you can actually find how much you do need in order to start growing. That's it. 
But everyone goes from one to 100 when it comes to protein because they've decided, oh my gosh, it's the building muscle blocks of life. And without it, I'm not going to increase my size. And that is true. But you don't need as much as some people think you need because any excess, your body's just going to get rid of anyway. And protein is so expensive right now, I would say save your cash. Three is an interesting one as well, and that is that you have to be super duper strong. And this really does tie into sort of YouTube fitness because you always see like jacked up dudes go, look how strong I am. By proxy, the bigger your muscles get, the stronger you're more than likely going to be. But do you have to be sort of twice as strong as you were when you first started working out to have a good body? No. No, you don't. And I would hazard a guess that the majority of people won't be. Any kind of progress or evolution you do have is going to be in increments. So whereas you may start doing a 50 kilogram bench press, maybe in a couple of years, maybe even longer than that, you'll be up to an 100 kilogram bench press. Now, a 100 kilogram bench press is incredible. That's a lot of weight. But when you then tie into what the internet is telling you, it is not that much weight at all. So strength is going to be completely exclusive to you. And some people won't get that much stronger, but their body will respond to the training in other ways. So don't buy into all this craziness going, oh, if you can't squat double your body weight, you're an absolute failure. No, you're not. Just go look at your legs. If you look at your legs and you flex them, you're like, oh man, look at those quads. Look at those hammies. Never say hammies. It's a terrible thing. But that means you have succeeded because you went to the gym to experience some increased muscle size and you've done it. So stop getting so down about strength. I saw this the other day on a forum. I can't remember where it was, but somebody said that they can't squat twice their body weight. It goes, you're failing, bro. You're failing. What are you failing? You're only in competition with yourself. And number two, finally we arrived, and that is intensity is everything. Nope. Because just go, just go to the gym. I really would prefer if more people focused on this kind of a message. Now, if you truly want to see some gains and some changes and blah, 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 all the things we've already talked about, then you are going to be have to, you're going to have to be intense as we've already talked about. But if you're sat at home as I am right now, and you're thinking about going to the Fitness Palace of Love and you're tired, oh man, I've got to go there, I've got to be intense, I've got to give 110%, even though I'm not an athlete, I just wanted to enjoy myself, take all that and throw it out the window. That ain't important. Go to have fun. Go to enjoy yourself. Go to be entertained. I love going to the gym. I look forward to it every single day. And surprise, surprise, these two usually work in flux with one another. Because when you go to do something that you are enjoying, all of a sudden, because you've got that good feeling in your tum-tum, you are intense anyway. But do not put this pressure on yourself. And if sometimes you leave the gym, you think, man, I could have done more. Great. You put it in your pocket and you store it away from next time when you go, oh, Simon, you remember that last time you didn't train hard enough. This time we're going to train harder. You are not going to have a 100% awesome gym session every single time. Ironic coming from me, but you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. So just try and find a way to mentally put yourself in a position where you can't wait to go. That's what the gym is all about. Everything else is just an addition that you can do down the line, but enjoying it this number one and going with the real number one in terms of this list it's that 15 percent body fat is too high what the flub are you talking about 15 percent body fat again this ties into all the nonsense you mostly see on instagram where now we're being told you have to be sub 10 percent body fat in order to be in shape and this is just coming from idiots like me when i say idiots like me i mean people that are super duper into fitness and are looking at it this way if you show someone with, we'll go with 10 to 15% body fat on the street to just random people who maybe just do a bit of cardio here and do a bit of weights, they'll be like, wow, bro, you jacked. And you show it to yeah, enthusiasts and they'll react like, oh man, you could lose some. No, 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 get rid of that. Get rid of that. That is the niche. That is the minority. That is the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1%. And you'd have to worry about them. They're all nerds and geeks anyway. 15% body fat is awesome. It's healthy and it's maintainable and it's sustainable. And you're not going to have to kill yourself to get it. Some people are going to be able to go down 10, 12, 8, something like that and feel good. But most people are going to feel pretty decent around 15 and some will even have visible abs. You do not need to be Super Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze to say that you have succeeded at bodybuilding or fitness and weightlifting. It is bull crap and it's not true. And tying back into the name of this thing, it is being perpetrated as a fact. It is not a fact. It's nonsense. Like, I don't want to say that over 15% body fat makes you overweight or fat because it's going to be completely unique to you. But this idea that 15% body fat is like some obese, not obese, but that it's like chubby, I can't, I can't handle it. Trust me, if you get to properly 15% body fat and you have been carrying a, a little bit of extra weight, you're going to be over the moon. And you're going to look in the mirror and go, Kaplow, I have seen where the work has gone. So you've got to take all of these and they need to be put down the toilet 
and then you flush the chain and never see him again. So there you go. That's that. More of me ranting and raving, but I think these things are important, hence why I shout them out of my mouth. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell ding ding so you know when other videos going live, there will be a video on the screen. As I always say, just click it. Don't have to watch it. That's what YouTube wants. Also, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you think about all of this. Grillavine.com for us as Simon. Use good Simon get 10% off. These are the supplements I use. I think they're good. At Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. Patreon.com for us as Simon316 for more videos and to support me that way. I'm on Cameo, Simon at the big cartel.com for merch. And I believe that's everything. Subscribe, probably said that, but subscribe. Otherwise, just enjoy the gym. Life is way too short for this nonsense. Goodbye.